I don't know if you thought you'd get here, but you're here. We're here. We're all going to have a good time together talking mules and donkeys. Steve, how are you doing today? Uh... Ask me after I have a sip of that come along coffee. Get that come along coffee. We got the demand going on right now. Uh, matter of fact, yeah. one of the shows a few weeks ago, we said come along coffee, and then the orders started rolling in. People want some of that come along coffee. You got to get the ask, tell demand. Oh my goodness! Uh, you asked me earlier what I uh, what I'm doing to condition the beard here. I'm letting it grow freestyle, Steve. I said fertilize. Fertilize. <laughs> That's right. I'm just letting it grow freestyle right here. But if there's anything that folks out there think I should do, um, we're open to it. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about beards. We're here to talk about mules and donkeys. And uh, we do it every single week. And like I said, my name's Dave. This is Steve Edwards. And every week from uh, at 3 o'clock, Steve takes a sip of coffee. And then we go. We start talking mules, donkeys, answering any and every question that you've got. If this is your first time ever hanging out with us, I just want to say welcome and I want to thank you for spending a little bit of your Wednesday with us. I know there's a lot of different things that you could be doing, a lot of different places you could be, and the fact that you're here right now spending a little bit of time with us, it's uh, it's humbling. I want to let you know how this works. Um, there's really only three things that we ask. Uh, number one is that you just say hello. Uh, Steve and I, we were hanging out on Monday morning. We spent a lot of time just uh, configuring his router, uh, talking mules, talking donkeys, talking shop. Uh, we could talk anytime we want, but we are here for you. And so we want to know that you're here with us. So put your name, where you're watching from, and uh, and what the uh, and what the weather is like. I got a message. Someone says, can't hear you. David Pingelli says, can't hear you. Uh, David, maybe give it a, can our folks, folks, are you able to hear us right now? Go ahead and put it in there uh, that you're able to hear us. Um, I want to make sure that it's, if it's uh, David, uh, that it's just him. And if it's everybody, then we'll have to make some changes here. Um, where you want your name, where you're watching from and what the weather is like. The second thing is that you ask any and every mule and donkey question that you've got. Uh, chances are, we, if if you're thinking it, somebody else is thinking it. And if you don't ask it, they may not ask it. No one's going to get the answer. So put the question out there. We will be happy to get you the results that you want via the answers you need. Uh, and then the final thing is that we ask, uh, you share this broadcast with friends and family. If you're on Facebook, you can click the share button and you can post it to your page, your profile, or just go ahead and type the at symbol and then tag the name of the person who you'd love to come and uh, watch with you. If you're on YouTube, we just ask that you like the video and subscribe and share that link uh, with anyone and everyone that you think it would be relevant for. So um, we're getting some uh, comments here that they can hear us fine. So David, it may just be your connection. Go ahead, log out, log back in. Hopefully that'll take care of it. Steve, what do you say we see, uh, we get to uh, some hellos to some folks watching today. You like that? I think that's good. Tell David to turn his hearing aid up. Turn that hearing aid up, David. Turn that hearing aid up, David. Uh, we've got Farrah watching afternoon. It's from Herman, and it's cold and rainy today. Beth Merritt from Central North Carolina. Check it in. Thank you for the ornament, Beth. Steve gave me mine uh, on Monday, and I've got it in the house ready for Christmas. It's going to be here before we know it. Kathy is watching from Elephant Butte. Uh, Farrah says, I got my saddle and all accessories. I'm loving them. Just waiting on the saddle pad. We're going to get that saddle pad to you. We're going to pad it up and you're going to love it. Uh, Ross is watching 63 degrees cloudy in Emmett, Idaho. Eileen is watching from partly sunny 43 degrees, Nebraska. Sarah is watching. We've got Jackie from Prescott. Very windy here today. Ross says, sounds good. Farrah says, yes, I can hear you. Uh, Eileen says, yes, I can hear you. Sherman Johnson, Norman, Oklahoma. It's raining. James Miller. Hi guys. I am in Florida and it's 86 degrees here and you fine. Roger is watching from Milan, New York. Cloudy. Steve, I see lots of mule trayers laying down mules. Never see them laying down donkeys. What do you think about the laying down of the mules, Steve? And why does nobody lay down donkeys? Nobody should be laying down mules, folks. I don't, you know, this is the new big deal that everybody all of a sudden thinks it's pretty cool. But here's the downside. <laughs> I've got a client that says, Steve, how do I fix this? My mule laid down in a river. 
Yeah, folks, listen. That is just a dog and pony tool you do not need. You don't need it. It ain't no big deal. Listen, the reason they laid them down was so they could hide behind them to shoot, you know, and this sort of thing. You don't need to do that. It's just think about it. They are not meant to have us on their back to start with. Not meant to. All right. And then we go and we put a saddle on them and we put my fat belly up there on as well. And then that's right. And then this spine is supposed to look like this, looks like this in a lot of cases. And then we go to get on when, when, uh, when that spine is like that and they got to get back up. Everybody thinks the mules are big and strong. Yes, they are. But you're only going to be able to handle so much of that. Matter of fact, I'm going to meet with a good friend of mine. I'm going to give him a call just because this reminds me, Dr. Robert Miller, world famous uh, veterinarian. And, uh, and I, I'm a, I'd like to get some, some tune up on him a little bit. And I want to give you all a scientific veterinarian why not to, not just the cowboy deal. Listen, it, that's a dog and pony show. Do if they can side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, and work off of a light bridle, good. But these mules that I've seen so far that they're laying down and people have called me about later on, they have no gears. They have no stop. They got a dog and pony show. Lay down. But, folks, that ain't no good. There we go. I've, I'll keep preaching that thing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you some solid more evidence as well. There we go. Roger, thanks for asking the question. Gives us a good opportunity to talk about it. Uh, Jackie says, coming through loud and clear. I love the sound of that, Jackie. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Daniel is watching from Espanola, Espanola, New Mexico, 60 and windy. Uh, Jackie from Placidas, New Mexico, sunny and 72. Uh, uh, Steve and Dave, Ron from Burge Hill, Ohio, and the weather has been great, warm and breezy. Denny is watching from Pang, Pangburn, Arkansas. Sarah Kay is watching from South Dakota. I had to cancel my reservation for RV at Bishop Mule, Day, Mule Days because they weren't having Steve do a program. Better have him next year. Better have him next year, Bishop Mule Days. Y'all, if you want Steve to show up to the event near you or the event you're going to, call them. Tell them. Coordinate with your friends. Call them up. We can call them all day long. They don't really care. What they want to know is what do the paying people want. And then they'll call us up. So give them a call and tell them, we want our Steve Edwards. Uh, Daniel is watching. We've got Joan watching from Buffalo Creek, Colorado. Cool and cloudy today with snow showers. Enjoy that. Jane is watching from Florida. Cowboy Ken, Connecticut, 62 and sunny. Jack from Johannesburg is watching. Been working with the come along rope and tapping on my mule, mule shoes Uh on mule shoes on my mule's feet. She will stand great for the farrier next time he's here. Last ride the other day rode the mule riders Martingale for a tune-up. So just getting a nice checkup there from Jack. I know picking up the feet is something that folks are real interested about. It just takes come along rope and a lot of patience and you can do it too. Uh, Sarah is coming into Phoenix. Good luck getting here and enjoying it. Sarah will be glad to have you in the Phoenix area. All right, let's see here. Susan is watching. Neil, Sue, Stacy, and Glenn on vacation in Florida. Sunny and gorgeous. All of them watching, having a beer by the pool. Uh, hey, <laughs> fellas, Levi here. It's a beautiful day in Albert County, New Brunswick. I picked up one of your sa signature series belt buckles on eBay. Just wondering how old is it? Steve, did you make signature series belt buckles? At one time, I was passing belt buckles out with my saddles. And I plumb forgot about that until now. That's that's a rare find right there. When when, when were you doing that? Because I've known you for fifteen years, and I don't ever recall it. It it was I don't know. It's it was uh, it's been a long time. It's ago. been a while. Yes, I don't remember when, but that is rare to find. I think I think I'd done that when I won that one world championship and got nice. that buckle and decided I'd. Do a bunch of buckles with everybody that bought my saddles. Seems like I don't remember. I 
I've drank coffee since then. <laughs> How fun. Um, all right, let's see here. Jack uh, says it's 33 degrees and snow, and Herman is watching from AZ. Uh, Janet is watching from uh, Wyoming, and Brad, Nanton, Alberta, Alberta. We've gone international, just about missed the start because we were out fencing, and the dogs got a little rough ride to make it to the house. The come along rope is working good on my two, two mules. We love that. Lamar is watching 58 degrees and cloudy, some rain out in Price, Utah. Folks, if you've got any question, go ahead, start putting them in the uh, comment section. We're going to get to P Carol's question first. Steve, um, Carol sent in an email and she says, I have a mule I bought about five weeks ago. I know it takes time, but rode her when I uh, bought her, went to ride her the other day, and she would not ride. Had a snaffle on her, then changed to O-ring like it's like there was nothing there. Could you please give me some advice? Uh, I love this mule, sweet girl. What would you say for Carol? Okay, folks. Again, we're looking at horse techniques. Everybody thinks I'm going to be nice to my horse, and uh, in this case, a mule, and I'm going to use a smooth snap a bit. Listen, mules care less about their mouth than they do their nose. And when you use a smooth snap a bit, this is what happens. We tend to overpull with our hands. We overpull to the right and to the left. We, we do. We overpull. So when we do that, this mule protects itself by getting a hold of that bit and keeping you from giving it direction or impulsion, you know, or stopping. So it'll go right through that bit because this is why you're pulling too much. I've even seen folks from a smooth snaffle bit, mules with split tongues from horse riders training this sort of thing and hurt the animals with a smooth snaffle bit. That's why I use the Mule Riders Martingale. I designed that 30 some years ago and it's got a double twisted wire snaffle bit in it and the whole program works correctly. But you got to get your nose on a vertical and your head down. Folks, if the head is not down and the nose isn't on the vertical in a sur single, why are you climbing in a saddle? I can't tell you how many people that have been hurt because they had ridden it. They went to, I talked to one lady, they went and spent three days at this place and rode. Three days. Got them home and could barely get on them. All right, now I can give all kinds of thoughts on that, but listen, if you can't tell, if I can't tell within that first hour that this mule is good or bad or ugly, then I ain't going to go no farther. Three days don't do diddly, folks. A one hour, less than one hour, you can know all about that mule. You can pick up its feet. You can ask vet questions. You can, you can, you can ride in, in a circle in 10 minutes. Lots of things you can do. You don't need to spend three days on there. It, it, it's, you don't need it, okay? Riding is not important. Well, I want to ride up this mountain and see if they can do that. Well, yeah, they can do that. Well, I want to ride down this canyon. So, yeah, they can do that. If you have the abilities to do that, not the mule, not the donkey, do I have it, okay? So uh, you have it. So that's really important uh, that, that, you, that you understand that. Uh, so get rid of the smooth snap a bit. And I suggest my mule riders martingale, but before that, before the riding, before the martingale, it is called ground communication. Folks, I cannot tell you enough about doing that first. Then, then, and only then, do you start writing. So I am putting in the Dave, comment section, I put a link to the Mule Riders Martingale, mm. and I put a link Where to the go, ground. Folks? What's that? I see, Dave looks like he's taking a nap. Can you, do you see I'm me? I'm not sure what's going on. Is anybody there? I'm Hello, here. David. Now, we got high speeds. So I don't know what's going on here. Steve. Very high speeds. Let's see here. Steve, can you see me? Can you hear me? I was out to Steve's place earlier this Anybody week. Know what's going on? Tell we were trying we're to work there. out. We were trying to work out the um, work out the internet, and I I'm not sure what the issue has been. We replaced the router. Uh, we optimized everything. We had the internet people out. So we're still having some issues. Uh, but what I was saying is I put the ground communication kit, a link to that and a link to the Mule Riders Martingale 
I put that into the comment section. Y'all can go check that out. Uh, there's lots of information there uh, on both the Ground Foundation Starting Kit and the Mule Riders Martingale. They're fantastic tools. I uh, want to say hello. Let's scroll back up here. Uh, let's see. Do we got him? Um, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Linda is watching. Raining and cold in McLeod, Oklahoma. Just got a yearling donkey with the best attitude. He's going to be so much fun to work with. Uh, we've got Jerry from Indiana. Nice day. Cooler air coming in tomorrow. Going to try to ride this weekend. It's getting to be that time of the year. Folks are getting out there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the next question that we got here, this is Jason. Jason has the question. Uh, he wants to know, um, can you ride with a driving bit? As soon as we get Steve back, we're going to ask that question, but I want to bounce down to Sarah. Sarah says, can you give a quick reminder of the bits you train with? I know you start with one and move to another. So this is a great question. Uh, Sarah, if you send a message to support at muleranch.com, I'll get a link for a video for you to check out. Um, but this particular, uh, this particular question, you'll want to start first and foremost with the ground foundation starting kit. You want to start on your ground communication using the come along rope and using the rope halter. That's the first thing. From there, you want to move to the mule riders martingale and uh, maybe mule riders martingale with a sur single. And that helps, that gets you and the mule, that gets the mule to get framed up, keep the nose on the vertical. And that Mule Riders Martingale comes with a double twisted wire snaffle bit, which communicates to both sides of the tongue. Steve was just talking a few minutes ago about the um, about a smooth snaffle bit, which does not communicate to both sides of the tongue. The double twisted wire snaffle bit communicates to both sides. From there, I'll let Steve take it over. Uh, Sarah said, "Where where do we? Um, what bits do you train with?" I said. Start with ground foundation, come along rope, adjustable rope halter. Then you move to the mule riders martingale with the sur single so that you teach the animal to frame himself up, get the nose on the vertical. And then that's where I left off, Steve. You fill in whatever blanks and then take over there. Well, dude, I, you know, I was uh, just talking with a client yesterday and her trainer is training this donkey and mule and doing a good job. Matter of fact, I had trained on this mule like 15 years ago or maybe longer anyway long story short is this i said she said she rode her donkey and i said did you pick up the donkey's feet and she said no i said did you do any type of lead work with the lead rope she said no the the, the trainer just put me on and i rode folks riding is not the important part get that in your mind please 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 okay Spend time on the ground, get to know them. Come along rope, come on hitch. Now, why the come along rope? Why adjust a halter? Because mules and donkeys care more about their nose than they do their mouth. So get them started that way first. Your trainer and you should be doing ground work first. Then comes the double twist to wire snap a bit, the martingale. Then comes the finish bit. Folks, we're putting the cart before the horse, or in this case, before the mule. So you got to you got to get that done first. That's why people have a hard time with mule stopping, turning, and things like this because they've not done their groundwork. Okay, they're not done their sur single work. You got to get them soft in the face first. Extremely important. So after so you get them soft in the face, then you introduce the mule riders martingale. You get them to frame themselves up. You use the sur single. Uh, let them decide how they want to pack that bit. Get used to it. Move it around. Feel the pressure on the nose. Um, when do we go from that mule rider's martingale into the trail riding that finished bit? Okay. Now, normally the mule rider's martingale, you are direct reining. Direct reining. Okay. Two hands. And direction impulsion. Notice I didn't say turn here. I didn't do that. <clears throat> I simply turn my wrist, direction, impulsion. When I can, one-handed, on the Mule Riders Martingale, pick it up for a backup, pick it up and go to the right, pick it up and go to the left. Notice I say pick it up. 
I didn't say constant pressure. Put the reins down. That's what the mule's looking for. Release. Relief as well. Release and relief. So you put your hand down. That says, okay, you've done what I wanted you to do. Good job. Now you pick up and go to the right. Now they're looking for that. Good job. Release. Let go. That's what they're looking for. So they're going to keep going until you put your hand back to center again. Then they go, okay, that's, that's all I need to do. Only thing they're wanting you to do is quit making them uncomfortable. Okay? So day you can one-handed back up, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, side pass. The day you can do that is the day you can start introducing the, the trail rider bit. And I said introducing. I didn't say go ride with it. Go try with it. Go train with it. Three, six, nine, twelve. That's your steps. That's your steps. Really super important. So you can, you can, they can pack that bit. They can learn where to put it. You can learn where it's going to be placed. And that's my foundation training. Very good. Uh, speaking of bits, Jason asked the question, wanted to know, can you ride using your driving bit, Steve? No. No, I don't suggest that at all. Folks, do not use my double twisted wire full cheek bit riding. You, you will weigh, you will make a mule super stiff and he will be extremely uncomfortable. Uh, it's, it, the idea of the double twisted wire full cheek bit is it has uh, a, a bar on the side of the bit here and it pushes on the side of the face. That is for driving. Now here's the deal. When they're packing a bit in a snaffle bit, you're having it very loose and if you over pull, you pull it through his mouth. It is not the bit's fault, folks. It is your fault because you over pull. You tried to make them make their turns rather than giving them a direction and pulsing to make their turns. So don't use a full cheek, double twist the wire bit. All you're going to do is create yourself problems in the future. And this day we always talk about this. You may get one thing going pretty good, but you're creating five more monsters that's going to show up on you and they, they'll bite you right in the mule. You know, uh, they will. Uh, and you, you got to think about that. I've, I've already been there, done that, folks. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, what will happen is I'll be sitting here. I see all the questions that come through. I'll be sitting here and I'll start reciting one of the questions. And then Steve will instinctively know, well, what have you been riding with? And so a lot of times folks will say, well, I started riding with this or I started doing this and she was doing okay for a while. Now, six months later, we're having this problem. And Steve will say, well, what have you been riding with? And it goes all the way back to that change that was made that it was okay at the time, but the mule and the donkey, they don't show pain and communicate pain the way you and I do. So they're not going to show you that, hey, I don't like this. It's going to take a long time. And then eventually that's where you've got one on your hands that could blow up. And they're finally going to say, I'm not, I'm done with this. I'm not going to take it anymore. Um, and that's, that's what we see. Uh, Julia's watching from Kansas. Uh, we've got Naomi watching from Eastern Washington. We've got, uh, let's see, Janet says, thanks for the links. Rip's watching, Steve. Rip's watching from uh, up there, a little bit north here. Uh, Linda, okay. the mule servant, and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule in cool and sunny rural central Ohio. They're watching. Our next question comes to us from Jackie. Jackie says, can you go over the steps on how to make Annie stand still and ground tie using the come along hitch? Now, I'm assuming that this is a mule, not the character from the play Annie. Um, I can get her to stand still, but when I start to move around her, she moves. Should I continue holding the come along when she's ground tied and then bump, bump, bump if she moves? That sounds like Steve Edwards talking right there. Is she right, Steve? Yeah, she's right. Uh, here's the deal. You know, we start out with about four foot of rope. We teach the feet to stand still. And then that, that four foot becomes six foot. That six foot becomes 10 foot. And we get to where the rope is touching the ground. Now, here's why I tell you, folks, do your groundwork first. It's your timing that you lose on. Your timing. So when the rope's on the ground at that time frame, if you've done your groundwork correct and your mules correct, all you got to do is barely touch that rope. Barely touch that rope. Barely touch it. And that mule will respond even though it's down on the ground. So, yes, this is going to help your timing. That rope's going to come down and it's going to go on the ground. And then you're going to step away from it. 
as soon as the mule starts to move, wiggle the rope. Here's what people tend to do. They cheat the mule. They move toward the mule, which tells the mule to stand still. Don't do that. You're doing come along work. So barely wiggle it. And this is going to really improve your time, uh, your timing with Annie. And it'll improve your timing with, with all your mules in the saddle too. Because if you can do it on the ground and you get your timing on the ground, it's going to be smooth as icing up there in the saddle. Great. Uh, CT's watching from Washington State. We've got Daniel watching. Says, if you've got a mule that's been riding with a girth in the back, and you swap to just a strap in the back after swapping to a strap, he wants to, let's see, if you've got a mule that's been riding with a girth in the back and you swap just to a strap in the back, now, after swapping to a strap, he wants to crow hop. Would that be the issue? So first off, I mean, it sounds like one strap in the back, you want to ride with a front and a rear cinch. Exactly. You want a front and rear cinch, and you want that right at that sweet spot, right where if if it's the saddle's made right, that and the saddle's placed in the right place, that cinch should come straight down straight. The front cinch will be at an angle. The back cinch will be straight, period. Okay? But you have to have that back cinch, and then, this is what's really important, folks, put a hobble strap from the front cinch to the back cinch, four to six inches. That then helps the back cinch to stay in place because the front cinch has got attached to the hobble strap and then the front cinch on the other D-ring is attached to the breast collar. So everything falls in place to hold it. So you should have two cinches and you should have a hobble strap. There we go. Two cinches, hobble strap. Uh, that's the basics right there. Make sure you got those basics down. Get that come along coffee too. Uh, Rory is watching 65 from Ohio breezy, but real nice. Uh, we've got, uh, filmer of Bobcats. I'm interested in getting a nice mule for trail riding. How can I be sure? Oh, this is the question. How can I be sure I'm getting a good one that is well trained out in Texas? How do I how do I know, Steve, that I'm getting a good mule, one that's been well trained? Mm. We we've mm. heard this a couple times. That's a good question there, uh, Filmer. Times, that's yes. a real good question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, number one, go get as much education as you can, because you should hear the stories that people are saying about their mules. I know about it couple auctions that just was over with and these mules have been there done that and then they get them home and they go there and they go here <laughs> yeah so so how can you be sure you get education now steve hey steve you know where i can get a good meal no i don't you know well yes i do but no i don't now yes i do because if i know the mule and i know the meal really well then I would say, okay, I know about a mule for sale. But here's the next problem. This is really, really important. I don't know you. I haven't seen you ride. And most of you all have heard this story. I'm going to tell you again. I would go to clinics with two well-trained mules. My wife's mule and my mule. These mules had a really good idea of what's going on. I always did demonstrations on a Friday night. So I could question and answer people and they could see that mule working. What was the next thing I'd done? I said, come on down here from the audience. How many people have been riding 30 years, 20 years, and their hands would go up? So come on down here and ride. Folks, everybody just saw that mule being rode. Everybody just saw that mule doing everything I asked it to do. Now, 15 minutes later, this other person riding, it looked like that mule wasn't even trained. It looked like the mule wasn't even trained. Not the mule's fault, folks. You know, not the mule's fault. A well-trained mule is going to be as good as you are. So learn to communicate. Get your education. Watch all these mule trainers out there and all these folks who, who, um, who, are, who, are, who are showing you their way of doing things. And you figure out what works for best for you. And you use that. You use that. So we've got a couple things. Uh, one of them's free, one of them's paid. And when you start talking, um, uh, 
filmer out in Texas, when you start talking about the amount of money that's going to go into this animal when you bring Mr. Mule home, uh, it, it it's not a bad idea to spend a little bit up front to make sure that you uh, don't trip over a uh, dollar to pick up a dime. So the first thing is we've got an article that says uh, how to buy a mule on Craigslist or at auction. It's a great article. It's Steve's most recent article and that takes you through everything that you need to consider when you're looking at checking out all these mules that you see online, whether it's Craigslist or Facebook groups or at an auction, uh, really gives you a good history of what to think about. And then the second thing is Steve's video so you want to buy a mule, which Steve takes through and explains uh, the three things that you want to look for, what he means by them, and what it is you want to look for in those things first. Disposition first, confirmation second, training third, and then everything else. And he goes through in that video, so you want to buy a mule, and dials into each and every one of those, has a mule right there, shows you what he means by each of those. So those are two things, one free, one paid. Both of them are priceless when you start talking about uh, making sure that you get the mule that's right for you and not having a butt mule where, hey, they told me that he had been up and down the Grand Canyon, and, but he won't. That's a butt mule right there. So great question. Really glad to answer it for you. Really glad we get another opportunity. Rory says, I need tips on getting my mule to take oral wormer. He is a 16 hand monster currently. Uh, I don't know if he's going to shrink, but currently he's a 16 plus hand high uh, monster. Listening on YouTube, Rory, uh, good question. Steve, what would you say? How do we get him to take this oral wormer? Here comes the twitch. Na, 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 the twitch. Listen, folks, part of picking up the feet is also part of doing vet work. And you're, don't expect your veterinarian because we don't have cowboy veterinarians these days. They used to be, when when I was starting out in this stuff, the veterinarians were real working cowboys. And some of them had gone to school and some of them had not. But let's go on. Uh, you sh everybody should teach their mules not to lay down, but to be twitch trained. And once you see that done, I demonstrated it for the last clinic, and it's a wonderful thing to see. We had one lady that couldn't catch her mule. She couldn't put the come along or nothing. She was able to do it by using the twitch. It creates natural endorphins. It makes them relax, this sort of thing. So you're going to get them used to doing a twitch. You're going to put that, that oral uh, uh, vaccine or whatever it is that you're going to be using, the wormer, and you're going to give it to them all in one shot. And, but that's the key thing, folks. Teach your mules when you're doing come along work. You should be teaching them how to how to uh, be twitch trained as well. I put a link to um, we we've got the humane twitch and a video of Steve demonstrating how to use the humane twitch. It's it's a great video if I do say so myself. Of course, I was the one who filmed it, so. It's my best work, uh, but the video is really instructive and the Humane Twitch is just very, very simple. I put a link in the comment section. Y'all can go check that out. Don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, you're going to miss a lot of beauty and you're going to miss a lot of amazing things when you judge a book by its cover. So don't just look at it and discount it. Um, get it, watch the video, and then get results. That's what it's all about here. Um, let's see here. Continuing on... Let's see. Yolanda is watching. Here we go. Hey, hey. Please send some sunshine and warmth. We're freezing here. It's not getting warmer at all. My mule girl still in winter blankets. It's almost mid-April too cold. Yolanda's up there in the Netherlands. She's holding down the fort for the mule community up there in the <laughs> Netherlands, and we appreciate her for it. It's good to see you, uh, Yolanda. Uh, filmer of Bobcats asked the question, do mules go well in a bozal? Uh, instead of a bit. Yes. And no. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a but there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mules do excellent in Bozales. Awesome. The downside is there are few people today that know how to use one correctly. There are different sizes of Bozales depending on where you are in your stages of training. I tell you to first 
do your nose work, which comes from the bozalis, with your come along hitch and do your ground foundation first. That, you learn to do that first. Then you go to the snaffle bit. Then you go to the finish bit. Here's the downside. I have seen more mules ruined by folks that are using a improper size come along hitch. Listen, I mean, um, uh, bozalis. Here's the deal. Mules are very, very sensitive about their nose. And you screw that nose up and you make them uncomfortable with that bozalis, you are going to pay the price. So don't start there. A bozal for me, the way I train, the way I teach, and the way I learn was it's the last thing that I will use. If a mule is really able to, to work in a bozalis, then I will use it correctly. Now, have I used a bozal on mules in the very beginning as well? Yes. They were so light, so easy in the come along rope, so light, so easy in the rope halter. I didn't bother with snap a bit because I knew they'd make a good, good hackamore animal. Okay. And I learned from what I think is the best uh, up in Canada, Nick West, of course, he's passed away now. And Al Dunning, right now, my very good friend, 25 time or more than that now, I think close to 30 time world reigning champion. Uh, Al's got a great book out on, on bozals and stuff. But anyway, I ran off and chased a rabbit. But to tell you, folks, don't jump the gun and go to using a bozalis. Um, uh, you have to be really good to not screw one up. Very good. Great question. Always appreciate being able to uh, talk about just about anything and everything, which reminds me, this is the first time you're ever hanging out with us. I just want to say welcome. My name is Dave and this is Steve Edwards. Every week we get together and do this talk mules and donkeys and you caught us almost smack dab in the middle of this week's program. So I'll just tell you real quick, three things we'd love to have from you. Number one, just announce yourself, share your name, where you're watching from, what the weather is like. Number two, ask those questions because we want to answer them. And number three, share the broadcast. If you're on Facebook, click share or tag your friend. If you're on YouTube, click subscribe, like the video, and uh, then share the link with uh, folks who you think would appreciate. We'll keep moving along here. Uh, Charlene is watching from Thornville, Ohio. We've got, hey, Mark Williams watching from Virginia, 70 degrees and misting rain. Uh, Sarah says, I have been using the come along rope for a year till I saved money to get my saddle. So Sarah did that ground foundation training, saved up, got that saddle, and she's all the better for it. Uh, Rex is watching 27 degrees and snow in Jeff City. Mules are taken to your training methods really well. Thanks for all your help. That's just about as good as it gets for us. Ain't that right, Steve? Yep, yep. Yeah, that's Love great. hearing that. Uh, Daniel, okay, so clarifying on the girth question, Daniel says, I have a girth in the front and a strap and just a strap in the back. He's been rode with the girth before in the front and back, but after putting just the strap, he wants to crow hop. Yeah, yeah, that's, the strap is too narrow. So what you're, what you're telling me you're using is two billets and then the buckle and strap in the middle. Don't do that, folks. That is going to make your mule unhappy. Uh, if you notice, my cinches are four inches wide. My cinches are also have elastic on the inside, expands and contracts with the animal. And... My cinches had perforated neoprene and cordura. The idea there, folks, is you need to create sweat to lubricate that cinch, okay? Really, really important, and to also create coolness. So, yes, get rid of them billets, folks. A mule saddle should not have billets on it. You'll know a saddle right off the bat. If it's got three billets on it, it's a horse saddle. It's not a mule saddle. It's not designed properly. And usually the D-ring is in the wrong place on most of these, on, on all these saddles, because my D rings where they are placed on the, on the saddle is completely different than everybody else's it's completely different. So let me tell you all this. Um, th it, when you come out to Queen Valley Mule Ranch for one of our live clinics, um, or if you, uh, are able to see one of Steve's sessions at a expo, you know, somewhere in the U S, um, if he's talking about cinches and talking about billets, one thing he's going to say is you don't want to use billets because what will happen is when you go to tighten up, the mule is going to blow air into his stomach because he's bracing because he knows that discomfort's coming. So you will see the stomach expand as he pulls in air and then 
he'll let that air out. And now you, you don't have the fit that you thought. Plus you're tightening up just on one side. And so it's not an even fit on both sides. At right. the last clinic we did, somebody came in there with billets and Steve was dim and it was, it was like Steve had told this mule ahead of time, Hey, but that's not the case. The mule just does it instinctively. Steve pulled up, you saw the belly expand. And as soon as Steve was done, belly kind of contracted just a little bit and you didn't have the fit that you thought. But then when we swapped out the billets and we put on the, uh, the cinches Steve has with the expandable material and then the, uh, the nylon straps, the neoprene, and it, this animal did not blow air into his stomach. Why? Because he wasn't getting the same type of pressure when you're going, going to, you know, tighten it up and, and pull it. He feels that. I mean, we all feel that right with the, I'm trying to show my belt here, but like when you're pulling the belt, you try to like suck it in. Right. And you're bracing yourself. Well, it's the same thing. So, um, anyways, it was a great example yeah. and, uh, we've got video that we're going to be putting out there. Um, let's see here. We've got uh, Jason says, Steve, you're a man of your words. I've seen a trainer desensitize a mule to a beach ball. I've never seen a beach ball roll down a hill elk hunting. Talk about what he means right there, Steve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big deal here 10 years ago, especially where people would go around and throw a beach ball at you and you were supposed to, the mule was supposed to react correctly. Well, the mule sometimes didn't act so correctly. Listen, desensitizing does not work, folks. You know, if you... Do you have an elk to desensitize or do you have a rattlesnake to desensitize with, you know, uh, or a mountain lion or whatever? It's up to you to be able to be the person who is the herd leader, who knows how to use your reins, who knows how to use the lead rope to get them to pay attention. Yep, you're right. I've never seen a beach ball going down the mountainside yet. Uh, it is 2021. Who knows what we will wind up seeing. But even if that happens, it don't change. You want speak that animal's language and have yep. him respect you as the herd yep. leader. Uh, filmer of broad Bobcats, lots of great questions today said, I grew up riding donkeys. Is a mule much different? Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot stronger for one thing, a lot stronger. They get, they've got the muscle tone in the hip. That's the downside of your, most of your donkeys folks. You know, they don't, they, they've got more of a, a rafter type hip rather than a nice round hip and a nice heavy Gaskin muscle. And so your donkeys rarely have that. And so because of that, they don't have the strength in the hind quarters. That's another good reason you see donkeys will naturally frame themselves up, nose on vertical, head down, and that helps them drive off the hind quarters. But nope, uh, the donkeys are nice to ride, but if you really want to ride in tough ground and you really want to ride all day, you're gonna, uh, a mule would be the best one for that. Now for most riders, you know, the, the three, four, five hours that they ride, they're doing good. You find a donkey with a nice round hip, you can get more out of it. Uh, Tracy's got an awesome question. I heard you mention two kinds of mules, the sweet, cuddly type and the more avoidant type. You said for a mountain mule, you'd take the avoidant type. Can you explain this? You bet. Well, the reason that is those mules always seem to have more of a bottom end, more aggressive. Uh, toward something like that, toward climbing mountains and stuff. So when they just they just seem to uh, want to get in there and want to dig into that mountain, want to get up beside or want to get in the harness and pull that wagon. They they just seem to have that that kind of working mental uh, mental attitude. For the other ones, it's more of a pet me and get me through this situation, which is okay. But if you really want to get something done, you need to have one that doesn't care about pet and it, do, it cares about working. I think it's called a Republican. <laughs> all day, folks. He'll be here all day. Uh, Trinity is watching from Wyoming, 36, and waiting for the snow to come. Hope all is well, and thanks for the show. It's our pleasure, Twin Trinity. Uh, let's see here. Um, Lisa McDowell, retired biologist. Oh, filmer of Bobcats is Lisa McDowell. Retired biologist from Texas A&M University, College Station, Texas, lightly overcast, around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you so much, Lisa. Appreciate that. David Pingelli says, I found my hearing aid. There we go. Glad glad you were able to find it. Can you hear me now? Uh, Kay is watching. Oh, okay. <laughs> Central Missouri uh, uh, weather is beautiful. 
Uh, Shelly is watching from Sookie, British Columbia, Canada. 62 Fahrenheit. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Sunny t-shirt weather. I've been looking at other channels' videos who have saddles that they use for their horses and mules. How can that be? How are they using a saddle for the horse and the mule, Steve? <laughs> well, that mule ain't going to be very happy later on down the road, and neither is that horse if you're putting one of my saddles on we got two different bone structures, folks. Uh, a lot of people like to change pads. Well, we'll change the pad to get the, the saddle to fit. Your pad does not make your saddle fit. Now, when can it kind of, quote, make it fit? It's when it's downhill. As long as it, if I can put that saddle tree on down here or not, you'll see how it fits the bone structure. But if it's downhill, that means the hip is too high and the shoulder is too low. So then you need my downhill pad to bring it up. So... For somebody to tell you that their saddle fits a mule and a horse, don't believe them. It don't happen. Uh, so got another question here. This one came in from Rhonda. You brought up the, the downhill hip pad. She says, does the downhill saddle pad work on a quarter horse also? My horse is higher in the rear than the withers, and my quarter horse saddle slides up over the pad. A lady recommended you guys. Yeah. Well, number one thing you should do, is take and put a rear cinch on that saddle. That's the number one thing. Folks, you gotta think about that. That front cinch is putting pressure right behind the scapula, even on horses. Where do you see your white marks on all your equine? Right in behind the scapula. Why is that? Because we only have the front cinch tight. Listen, on a horse, you want your front cinch to be tight, your back cinch to be snug. So number one, use a back cinch. Don't use billets, get rid of the billets, and only use latigos. That's number one. Second thing, will my pad help? Yes. I've had a lot of people tell me that's been riding my downhill hip pad that have quarter horses, and that's why uh, we're starting to use more and more downhill hip pads because people are breeding to good quarter horses, and they've got a nice hip. They're bred for working cattle, not going down the trail. But now you've got a trail rider. Yes, my pad will help you out. But now, here's the other thing, too. If you're riding a square-skirted saddle, my pad is designed for a round-skirted saddle. And it's done that way to take pressure off the hip along with my, my saddle. So there you are. Uh, Andrea sent in a message. And uh, before, I, before I read this uh, question, um, if we are constantly evolving. Steve is constantly evolving his tack, his saddles, um, we don't just say, okay, 1996, we learned what we needed. That's it. We're constantly updating. Uh, matter of fact, Steve is constantly learning new things from other cowboys, other folks out there. And, uh, we say, okay, hmm, interesting. And then we experiment and we learn, uh, about a year, year and a half ago, two, two years now, uh, we were down at the Andrada ranch in Tucson and Steve had begun work evolving the tree for his saddle based upon all of the new things that he had learned. And so we went down to the Andrada Ranch. There are about 15, 20 different mules, donkeys down there. And Steve and Randy, if you were at the clinic here uh, last month, you would have met Randy. Steve and Randy uh, spent time moving the tree from animal to animal saying, you know, Randy, what do you think about this? And hey, how does this fit? And that was not the only time. That was just the time I saw it. That happened for a period of probably about a year. What we used to have was a tree that was a polypropylene tree. It was a, a fabricated polypropylene tree. And we have evolved that design. Steve has evolved that design. And we have returned to the strong history of the wood tree. But we have upgraded it. And we're no, no longer using rawhide on the outside to, to, as, a, as a covering. We're using a solid um, fiberglass coating. So this question comes from that history. And so we're constantly evolving and making it better. Uh, Andrea sent in the message. I would like to know if the new wood tree in the cowboy or the ultralight saddle fits the same as the old polypropylene tree. I have an old trail rider light saddle with the polypropylene tree. Thank you. So Steve, what, what do you say there to Andreas? Yes, it's still the, the bars are still in the same place. They're still got the same angle. All of that is the same. So the placement of the bars 
from the polypropylene saddle uh, tree to the wood tree, that is all the same. The only thing I did a little bit more different on the wood tree is I took the front of my bar and I curved it up just a little bit more, okay? Just a little bit more, so I had a little bit more relief. I couldn't do that on the old uh, tree, the polypropylene, because we had our, uh, our, our dies set up only one way. It cost $60,000 for a new mold. And at 71 years old, I wasn't going to buy uh, new molds and do that. Not going to happen. So we developed the wood tree. The wood tree still has the, the same placements and everything. And how I learned that was the adjustable pack saddle. That's how I learned my angles. That's how I learned how far from the spine uh, to each bar. I learned that from using these mules and these pack saddles. So to answer your question in the long run, the polypropylene tree <coughs> and the wood tree are basically all the same dimensions. Very good. I'm putting a link right now, folks. If you have never seen the pack saddle, um, I would encourage you to go check it out on the website. Uh, there's some videos. If you scroll down on that page, there's some videos and it's just a really good, um, really good history lesson, uh, not just on uh, Steve saddles, but the, the structure of the mule and the donkey uh, overall. So I'll post that here in a second. Nancy is watching from uh, Tennessee. Ashley has the question, how different is a burrow versus mule training? Actually, they're, they're pretty much about the same, really, because here's the deal. The thing with the mule, mule is you're training three different entities, a donkey, a horse, and a mule. You're training and training three different entities. Now, if you're training just a donkey, you got just that donkey mind. And you'll see that donkey mind come up on a mule at times. And, and where this comes up is this, where people say the mule is stubborn. Nope. That is the donkey saying, wait a minute. Explain to me that in more depth. Um, kind of like our wives, Dave. Um, yeah. I, I want more. Give me more detail. That's what my wife was always 52 years now. Give me more detail. And I thought I explained it, but I'd give a man's version. Okay, so let's go back. When it comes down to these mules and donkeys, when you're training just the donkey, you've got to remember they don't express things like other equine do. They'll do it and kind of you kind of think, yeah, hello, anybody in there? Yeah, uh, and that donkey's going, I'm thinking on things. That's why I tell you folks, when you're training, do three, six, nine, twelve. Not ten minutes, not twenty minutes, not five days. You do it three times, and it does it correctly, and it does it. It, it betters each time. That's what you want to do. Okay, uh, so that that gives you a, a little tiny view of of the overview. Awesome. Uh, Shelly put in a question, and she says, "I've." Uh, been on a Facebook page that says mules and horses are not anatomically different. Call me confused. Now, I can't find it. Yolanda sent in. Um, Yolanda, if you still have them, maybe send them in again. Yolanda was at a, a museum, I think it was, and she there, there was a skeletal structure of both yeah. the horse and the mule and the donkey. And she sent yeah. those over to us. Now I can't find them here. I've been looking while I was wait while Steve was answering that last question. I was looking, but in those pictures, if if Yolanda sends them, I'll post them up. In those pictures, you can see the differences. Steve, just describe very quickly just a couple things that uh, Shelly can look at on her mule and realize that it's different from a horse without you know getting to the skeletal structure. Sure. All right. The first thing that you want to look at. When you look at that mule, what do you see? Donkey. The head and the feet is the first thing. Some of them a little bit more uh, with, with some of the other attributes, the hind quarter and this sort of thing. That's the number one part. Now, next, watch the, the scapula. As that scapula is moving, watch the scapula on the horse run horizontal. Watch the scapula on the mule move up and down, up and down, okay? Now, these folks would love to tell you this because that tells, that says that it's okay because they're placing the saddle up on the scapula, 
Now, here's your little test. Put your saddle up on the, the, the wither and up on the scapula like you do your horse. Now put your hand up underneath there on the right-hand side. Now bring your hand around and see if it doesn't match your hand. Bring the head around and match your hand. Now here's the next part. Now put somebody in the saddle and try to slide your hand in that scapula. Guess what? You can't do it. Why is that? Because the scapula goes up and down. Now, Dave, we did some video in the different clinics showing the scapula. You know, matter of fact, even when we was down at Randy's, we, we did some, some videoing of showing the scapula and how it moves. So, uh, yes, it is. Uh, go look at your horse, watch your donkey and your mule and watch the scapula alone, you know. Uh, I put a link in the comment section to what we have called the mule saddle training course, Shelly. Inside there, there is a video called The Way the Mule Moves. And it, that's where Steve's talking about at the Andrada Ranch. Um, that's where we basically documented exactly what he explained. You see that scapula go up and down. And one exercise that Steve will do, he will, um, he when you're at a clinic, he will p have... Um, folks saddle up their animal and, uh, their pad, their, you know, saddle, everything. Um, he will then position everything and he'll take the horse or he'll take the mule's head. He'll, he'll have it all framed up. He'll take his hand. He'll slide it up underneath the saddle pad right there where the scapula is. And then he'll turn the head and you'll start to feel pressure right there on the your hand. It'll start to pinch. It'll hurt. And so he'll have everybody come up and slide their hand in there and they'll be like, ah, and they, and they have to tug it out because it's pressure. Well, that's the pressure that Steve's talking about here. When you watch the animal move that now that, that animal's just standing still now that it's moving, that pressure is pounding over and over and over. And it's a, it's a big hurt on the animal. So that's just a little bit extra, but get that mule saddle training course. You'll see the video in there, how the mule moves and um, you'll you'll literally see up and down, and it, it'll make a lot of sense to you. Um, let's see. Hey, Kathy is watching from Cotati, California. Uh, we've got uh, David Pink Kelly says the hearing aid was in the pasta. Darn pasta happens to the best of us. Um, Charlene is watching. Says gotta watch out for them pesky wild beach balls. Absolutely, you never know what's coming at you in 2021. Myra says, happy I managed to sign on with you today. We are too. I'm planning to be up on your saddle and my new mule very soon. So glad to have your tack. It's all working so well. Love hearing that. Uh, let's see. Charlene says, that beach ball might replace those tumbleweeds. Uh, Lisa <laughs> says, I rode my friend's mule in northern Texas. We came upon a mountain lion eating rabbit in a ditch. The lion bolted one way and the mule bolted the other way, but oh, oh. no more than 50 yards, then all good. Um, let's see. She says, I got to find a Republican mule. I'm more of a libert libertarian. Um, <laughs> let's see here. I like, I like you, Lisa. Um, Let's see. So she's just making a comment there um, about the mule bolt in the other way. But that just goes down back to the fact that you cannot you can't desensitize. You've got to have command in the saddle. We'll keep rolling on here just to make sure it's four o'clock. We have a few more questions to get through. Tony is watching from Victoria, Australia International. Molly was an abandoned small white mule with bad feet. She wouldn't pick up her feet. Using Steve's method, she is now picking up all feet without any problems. Next on the agenda is teaching her to load on the float. Do you have any special suggestions to help? I've float trained many horses to self-load, but I'm sure mules are different. And I'm guessing that float in Australia means trailer, Steve? That's what they usually call it. Yep. I was thinking about when I was in, uh, in uh, Alaska and uh training this mule to jump in a boat and i that had come to my mind there we got that video someplace somehow or another we'll have to get a hold of that and get that up you know uh anyway so yes uh, use the come along hitch and uh and and i i have a video that i've used uh trailer loading that will give you the steps how to do it all the way through and and we've done that a couple different times matter of fact my last clinic uh, we had a mule that wouldn't load in the trailer, had been loading really good, and we went to load it, and it wouldn't do it. So I got that mule. That was a pretty good video. We, we shot that video too, huh? Yeah. yeah, that one, I'm 
Yes, it's very, very good. I just put a link to the trailer loading uh, video, and that one's fantastic too. Uh, it's yep. Steve. It's it's ground foundation training, and then transition yep. to the trailer. That's right. Yep. So there you go. Uh, best thing, Tony, ground foundation training. Get that video. It's going to show you the steps. Forty five minutes. That animal. The uh, um, Catherine, the owner of the mule in the video, said, "Steve, we had to have what was it like." Six, ten, something, but what you know, too, too many um, uh, men try and hoist this mule into the trailer, and that's just a, an emergency room visit oh, waiting man. to happen. 45 minutes later, this mule's walking. He wasn't happy about it, but he's no. walking in and out of that trailer and uh, finding out who's boss. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sherman has the question, when hobble training, how long do you keep them hobbled at a time? Well, you know, just a few minutes at a time. That's I do that. And then eventually you can get to where, you know, they can spend up to half an hour, 45 minutes in a hobble. I don't like keeping my animals in a hobble. And let me just give you an idea of what I do. Uh, let me just use the Grand Canyon as an example. When I have a pack outfit that has shifted some and I need to fix it or I need to adjust a halter or something back on my mules when I lead five mules, I get off of my mule, I hobble the front legs, I have my lead rope hanging down to the ground and the other part of the rope hanging up on the horn. Now it's ground tied. So once I do that, now I can go back and fix whatever it is I got to fix or get off and, and doctor a calf or a cow or whatever I need to do. Hobbling folks in the front feet is only meant to be a short time. 30 minutes is a long time. 10 minutes is an average. Now, if I'm going to hobble for grazing, a left front, right rear, okay? That's what I'm going to do. Then they'll scoot and can go. Uh, I've got a video out on that. Uh, it's called, uh, 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 oh, wait here. And I talk a lot about uh, how to prepare and how to use hobbles and high lines and this sort of thing. I'm putting a link that uh, wait right here. Um, it's a great video set. Uh, Y'all really enjoy it. I put that in the comment section there. Uh, let's keep trucking along here. Sarah says, when and where is the next live clinic going to be? So uh, we had one this spring. And I would imagine we'll start talking about doing one in the fall when it cools down a little bit. Uh, we don't have anything planned and we don't have anything to commit to, but it's something that we're always curious about. So make sure that you're receiving Steve's emails so that when we do have one, you get signed up. The participant where you bring your animal out, those go fast. Uh, but the spectator, we, we allow as many people in um, as we as want to come to be a spectator, but those participant spots those will fill up and you will be left with your hat in your hand if you don't get them pretty quickly there uh let's see here brady's watching lane is watching tony is watching uh says what do i feed the donks during a camping trip feed them the same thing as you do at home folks don't change feed you change feed you got a good chance of getting colic oh mules and donkeys don't colic yes they do OK, and if you've had to put one down like I've had to put them down or you've had the doctor like I've had the doctor, you will learn never, ever change feed right off the bat. OK, don't just say, OK, we got plenty of feed and grass and stuff up there when I go up to the mountains. Yes, you're right. But don't change that feed. That's why I feed personally a pellet. Uh, can you bail up hay and take it with you? Yes. OK. But don't change feed, folks. You can run into a colic problem. Very good. Um, Yolanda says, I'm baffled every time I see people sell horse saddles as mule saddles. We're baffled, too. Uh, send them our way, Yolanda. We know you are. Uh, Yolanda, uh, let's see. She's going to send those pictures, so I'll watch for them. And uh, um, whoever was at, Shelly, I think it was you, Send a message to support at muleranch.com. When Yolanda sends those in, I'll send them out to you. You can uh, yeah. take a look at those. Uh, Charlene says, stand them side by side. You can see a world of difference. Talking about looking at the differences between the animals. Um, let's see. Tex Taylor, 
uh, deceased, did a weekend donkey workshop. He pointed out quite a few physiological differences between the donks and horses. You know that name, Tex Taylor? Oh, Tex, I mean, tell you, that man knew donkeys. I wish I could have spent some time with him. But Tex Taylor, I talked to his daughter after he had passed away. and I was kicking myself for not going and spending some time with Tex. But that man, I mean, he was... He, he taught in colleges and this sort of thing. I mean, he was a professor, but he knew these donkeys, and his donkeys were excellent. If you ever can get a hold of a Tex Taylor donkey, you will have one with confirmation and a good mind. Uh, oh, yeah, Tex, Tex. That's, that just gives me goosebumps thinking That's about cool. that. Great That's cool. That's cool. I can tell. Uh, Lori says, thank you for doing these dis- uh, these live discussions. She's watching from Florida. It's our pleasure. We love doing it. Uh, Yolanda says, uh, look in your messenger. I'll check out messenger. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, Tracy is watching. Thanks so much for the reply on the cuddly versus avoidant mule. My mule is a tad more avoidant. There you go. So you got a good mountain mule. Uh, I mean. Reggie from North Dakota is watching. Eileen, uh, Eileen and Tracy are chatting back and forth. Love seeing that. Shelly says, thank you for the scapula info. Now I can go back to the Facebook page and explain. I'll refer them to you for their saddles. Thank you, Shelly. It makes me think a little bit. I went to a doctor's office and of course, every time folks, um, you know, find something that they, that they think is wrong, where's the first place we go? We go to Google and we start searching and on the wall, it says, please do not uh, confuse your Google search with my medical degree. It just goes to say that like everyone can put anything out there that they want to, um, but you got to have the goods to back it up. And here's one thing Steve will say, um, you can do whatever you want to do. If you're here, what you are going to experience is Steve sharing out of the 40 plus years that he's been working, cowboy in his whole life, but working with these animals since all the way to 81, okay? So if you're here, that's what you're going to get. And um, like I said earlier, it's not like, okay, 1993, we figured it out, done, moved on. No, like it's a continual learning process. And it's just easy for people to say whatever... you know, we're not going to get into this, but it's easy for people to just say whatever they want to say because of how it makes them feel. What we are interested in, in getting results and helping you stay as safe as possible doing it, making you the herd leader. Um, we could have a whole show just all about that. Um, Jerry says, my mule gets nervous when a four wheeler baby stroller bicycle comes toward him. He does fine. If they keep moving, if they stop, it puts him on red alert. He will stop and want to flight. Is this the donkey side thinking? I use the martingale and it works great for keeping his attention. We make it through. Thanks. Yes. Well, it's it's kind of the, the donkey side staying in place, but it's your communication skills making it stay in place. The flight, that is your horse. Turn and go. Boom. You know, that's the horse side. But so you've learned to go right, left, right, left and to tell that mule that you are the leader and you're going to go. Now, you hear that, folks? It had a baby buggy and, and other things like that. You know, uh, I have seen uh, Pat Pirelli take a bicycle and put it on top of a horse even to show folks that he desensitized the uh, the horse from the bicycle. Well, you know, a few minutes later, <laughs> things changed. You can't desensitize, folks. You can do like this guy here. He learned to communicate to the animal, pay attention, watch me, listen to me, listen to that mule rider's martingale. That right there keeps me solid. All right, Steve. So I want to show you something here. Let's see. Current. Yeah, you left me, Dave. Can you see? Can you see that there? I can see. I can see you 20 years ago. <laughs> can you see me now? I can see a little willy worm underneath your lower lip. Um, right here, I've I've got the, I've got the uh, the video or the photos here that Yolanda sent in. So now this is a horse right here. This is a mule, and this is the donkey. So the horse, the mule, and the donkey. And so if you really took some time to study them, you would definitely see. Uh, some uh, major differences, major, major differences. 
And so if uh, if you're interested in these, send an email to support at muleranch.com and I'll, uh, I'll get these back out to you. Uh, let's see if we can wrap up um, the rest of the uh, questions here. Um, Tony says, thanks. I can't see the link on here. Am I missing something? Tony, it'll be in the comment section. Uh, but if you can't find it, send an email to support at muleranch.com. Tell me what you're looking for and I'll get it for you. Um, Herschel is watching. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Lisa says, I watched Tex do a dressage on a mammoth Janet, uh, Jeanette with no bridle. Amazing man. So there yeah. you go. Goosebumps yeah. all around. Uh, Reggie oh, yeah. says, so I bought the come along but can't get close enough to get it on. Do any of your videos address this? Steve, that's a that's a good question. Any videos address this? No. Uh, other than my round pin training right there in the very beginning of how to communicate uh, video, that, that round pin is really, really important to one. Uh, and, and oh, also, Dave, uh, the one where we have the husband and wife in the corrals and we got one, you know, where we're trying to teach her to get the mule to stand still. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that one right there would be really helpful to him, you know. That one we called um, uh, Establishing Leadership, and yeah, it, it's, a, it's yeah. a great set. It is a husband and wife who came out to the ranch, uh, spent one or two days, I can't remember, Establishing Leadership, spent, uh, spent a lot of time out at the ranch, and you see them go all the way from not being able to catch uh, to, um, doing work in, uh, in the arena. So I'm going to try and get that here. It doesn't look like it's going through establishing leadership. Now, all I'm seeing on you, David, just your little picture of you back when you was about nine, I guess. <laughs> back in my boy band days. Yeah. Who knows what the deal is? I'm it, maybe it's Skype. Um, I'm still here though. I'm alive. Okay, I hear you. Um, let's see. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Last comment. We got to it. Horse spook equals gone with the wind. Theo spook equals let's stop and consider this for a moment. And I can't think of a better way to sum up today's conversation. Just stopping for 60 minutes and thinking about things. Uh, making sure that you're equipped to get out there. Um, gain trust, get results. Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done for today? No, we're doing good. The one time where I went blank, evidently the internet went completely dead here. My wife was in the office working on stuff, and all of a sudden the internet went boom, went off. Who knows why? Uh, but we are better now. I mean, now we, you know, we're back in in mode again. And it I looks. I mean, it looks a, just from my end. It looks a lot clearer than it had been. So hopefully yeah. we can figure out. Maybe that was just an isolated thing, and it just so happens yeah. it happened during this call. Yeah. Yep, we're good. We're awesome. Good. Thanks again, Dave. Awesome. Very good. Oh, hey, I figured out oh. why you can't see me. Folks can see oh, yeah. me, but Steve There you are. See me. Hey, see. isn't it neat that Yolanda was – she's so into figuring out what is the truth and things like this that she actually found the bone structures in a museum. And, oh, yeah. And what a wonderful thing. Here's one of the things, Dave, and folks, you all listen to this. There's a lot of folks out there right now that are doing clinics, and you can learn something from everybody, everybody. You learn what you can from each one of them people, and you take what you've learned, and if it works for you, it works for your mule, use it. You know, I don't care who they are. Now, there's a lot of horsemen out there in a mule costume, all right? But you, you make a decision. Does this work for you, the horse with the mule costume or the mule with the horse costume or whatever it may be? And, and if it works for you, use it. But make sure that that mule and that donkey is happy when you're doing it. That's that's super important. Yeah, I'll tell you what. One of the best things, too, that uh, something that I really appreciate. Uh, visit this page. Something I really appreciate is when we get folks. Uh, sending in comments, sending in emails, just sharing their experiences. We have gone ahead and uh, created a page on the Mule Ranch website um, where you can learn a little bit about folks' experiences, particularly implementing what it is they're learning from these live sessions, from uh, clinics, from Steve's videos, uh, what they're experiencing with the TAC. I just put a comment 
uh, in the comment section. It's uh, it, it's basically the training results that folks are, are sharing. It's just real owners, real results. Go check that out if you have questions about, hey, is this really going to work? Uh, we could tell you all day till we're blue in the face that it will. But um, we, we, we value hearing reviews from other folks for the things we want to buy. Same thing here. We, we'd love to share with you uh, some yeah. of the results that folks have gotten. Um, and and we, get some, we get some comments, folks calling saying, your saddle is not working. Well, what we do is we hop on the phone and uh, talk through it. And, um, you know, three weeks later, we get an ornament from the person saying, hey, thanks so much. I guess I should have watched the video first. Here's an ornament. Appreciate you. So that can be your experience too. Folks, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Like I said at the very beginning, I know you could be spending your time anywhere. Steve knows that you could be doing anything. The fact that you're here with us really is humbling and it's something we do not take for granted. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everyone. Steve, we'll see you. Yep, we'll see you, folks. Pray for Amanda. Pray for the United States.